Hi, in this video I'm going to prove that all the subgroups of the group of integers with addition have this form, where this is a set of integer multiples of n for some integer n. And this subset is represented like this, where we have n times x for all x in the set of integers. So we call this all integer multiples of n. And we're going to show that the only subgroups of the group of integers have to look like this, so if they don't look like this, then they can't be a subgroup. So let's go ahead and start this proof. First, since we're saying that these are the only subgroups of the integers, let's first show that this is in fact a subgroup of the integers. And in order to do that, remember, we need this to be a subset, we also need it to be closed under addition, and we need this along with addition to be a group. Now clearly this set is a subset of the integers, since we assumed that n was in fact an integer. So the next thing we need to show is that the set of integer multiples of n is closed under addition. So we'll let x and y be in this set. Then we'll say that x equals n times a and y equals n times b for some a and b which are integers. Now in order to show that this is closed under addition, we need to add x plus y and make sure that that is also an element in this set. So if we write it out, we get x plus y equals n times a plus n times b. And then we can factor out this n, so we get n times a plus b, and now this is clearly in the set of integer multiples of n. So this shows that it is closed under addition. Now the next thing we need to do is show that this is a group. So let's start by showing it has an identity element. We know that 0 is an integer, so we know that n times 0 must be in the set of integer multiples of n. And we know that 0 is the identity element for addition, so we have shown that it does have an identity element. Next, we need to show that it has inverses. So we're going to let x be an arbitrary element in this set of integer multiples of n. Then we can write x as n times a for some integer a. Now since a is an integer, we know that negative a also must be an integer, so that tells us that n times negative a must be in the integer multiples of n as well. And then of course we know that this is our inverse for our original element x. So we have shown that it's closed under inverses. And the last thing we need to do is show that it's associative. But there's really not much to show here. Because we assumed addition was associative for all elements in the set of integers, and we said that the integer multiples of n was a subset of the set of integers, so addition must be associative on this subset as well. So there's really not much for us to show. So with all this work, we have proven that the integer multiples of n is a subgroup of the integers with addition. Now that we've shown that this is in fact a subgroup, we need to show that this is the only type of subgroup we can have. So we need to show that any subgroup of the integers with addition has to have this form where we have the integer multiples of n for some integer n. So let's start by taking an arbitrary subgroup, we'll call this subgroup h, and then we want to show that h must equal n times the set of integers for some integer n. So let's go ahead and start proving this part. So first we can consider when h is the trivial group. Then we know that h is really just equal to 0 times the set of integers. So if h is a trivial group, we can write it in this form. So now since we've shown that the trivial group can be written in this form, let's actually assume that our subgroup is the non-trivial subgroup. Then we're going to let an element n be the smallest positive element of our subgroup h. So we're saying that this element n, this is an element of h, it's also greater than 0, and n is also less than every other positive element of h. And of course we know that there is an n like this that exists. Because we're assuming that it's not the trivial group, so we know that there's an element that's non-zero, and we also know that there must be an element that's positive in this group, because it can't just be made up of negative elements, since it must be closed under inverses. Now if we take the case where the smallest positive element of our subgroup is 1, so if we have n equaling 1, then our subgroup h must actually equal the set of integers. And that's because of the closure property of subgroups. So if we have 1 in our subgroup h, 1 plus 1 must also be in our subgroup, 1 plus 1 plus 1 must be in our subgroup, which is 3, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so on. So we're going to actually get every integer if we just keep adding 1 to itself or adding the inverse of 1 to itself. So as long as we have 1 in our subgroup, it will give us the whole set of integers. And of course, the set of integers can be written in this form where we just have n equaling 1. So now let's look at the next case where we have n is greater than 1. 
Okay, so first we know that the integer multiples of n must be a subgroup of h. And that's because we know that n is an element in h, which means that n plus n must be an element, n plus n plus n must be an element, and every multiple of n must be an element in our subgroup h. So that tells us this entire set here is contained in our set h. Now the next thing we want to show in order to show that h equals the integer multiples of n is that h is also a subset of the integer multiples of n. Because remember if we can show these two, if we show that this one is a subset of this and this is a subset of this, then these two must be equal. Now in order to show this, we're going to let h be an element in our subgroup h. Now we can write this element h as n times q plus r because of the division algorithm where we have r being greater than or equal to 0 and less than n. And this is for some integers q and r. And you can click on this link to learn more about the division algorithm. Now obviously we know this h is in our set h, and we also know that this n times q is in our set h as well because we said that this is a subset of h. So by the closure property that tells us that h minus n times q must also be in our set h. And since we know that h minus n times q is actually equal to r, we can say that r is actually in our set h. And from this, we can say that r must equal 0. And that's because we assumed this element n here to be the smallest positive element in our set h. So the only possibility for r is that it equals 0, because it couldn't be any other positive integer and still be less than n. Now that we know that r is equal to 0, we can plug that in here, and we get that h equals n times q. And now you can clearly see that this is an integer multiple of n, so this is in this set. So that tells us that the set h is equal to this set of integer multiples of n. So this proves that any subgroup of the integers must have this form. And that concludes our proof. Thanks for watching.